Hello Futurasis and Pre-Med Explorers. This is Milena Garcia, your host for Ross University Checking the Post, a pre-med podcast. This is our mini podcast featuring facts and information about our medical program, insights from current students, and tips from practicing physicians. Each week, this podcast will be broken down in small episodes, focusing on one aspect of our program, also having guests talk about their own experiences as students and as doctors. In this episode, we're celebrating our match 2023 results. The process to receive your medical degree from Ross is the same as medical schools in the United States. It includes the successful completion of the medical school curriculum, then your clinical rotations, and then the passage of all three parts of the US MLEs. This year, Ross University School of Medicine's first time residency attainment rate for the 2022 and 2023 graduates is 97%. So far, 592 graduates attained residencies in the cycle in 25 medical disciplines. My guest today is one of them. Please welcome Dr. Elizabeth Arminas. Welcome back, Future Aussies. Thanks for joining us again. In this episode, we're going to be speaking with Elizabeth Arminas. Thank you for joining us. So let's take a moment to introduce yourself. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Arminas. I graduated from Florida International University uh, for undergrad, and I majored in biology with a focus in marine biology. And I just matched into the University of Louisville, um, and I'm matched into pediatrics. Congratulations. We're so excited for you, and we're so proud of you. Tell us about how life at undergrad was. Life at undergrad was great. I mean, I was in Florida. I was near family, um, and I was starting to figure out what the pre-med life was about, um, taking hard classes like chemistry and biology and all that stuff, but then also um, realizing that I liked marine biology. I got into a marine biology research lab um, through combining my passion with scuba diving and marine biology. I ended up doing four years of research in a marine biology lab um, and alongside doing my, pre- my pre-med requisites. What a fun combination, marine biology and medicine. So pre-med was still the goal. Medicine was always the goal. Tell me more about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Medicine was always the goal. I grew up in a family that um, where nobody in my family uh, was a doctor, uh, but I just naturally my personality, my personality, I like to help others. I also like to work with children with disabilities. And so the science and the interesting um, pathology behind disability and then serving others, it felt like um, that's like medicine would be the best route for me. And my family always encouraged me and always kept saying, oh, you'd be a great doctor, you'd be a great doctor. So um, I always had in the back of my mind, um, even though other interests creeped up. Now, I know you had a little bit less of a traditional path coming from kindergarten to medical school. How did you end up applying to Ross? After I graduated from FIU, I um, decided to take the a different route and become a teacher. And so I taught kindergarten and 12th grade, and I found myself still talking about medicine um, and introducing topics um, like rare diseases to my students and having them kind of make like presentations up about the subjects. I kept thinking about it and I mentioned it to my, to my parents and um, time went by and my stepdad actually had a conversation with 
this friend who is daughter-in-law um, went to Ross and she is very successful and she um, was a chief medical officer for a practice in California. And so my stepdad encouraged me to apply to Ross and I did and now I'm here. <laughs> and now you're done. I'm done. Yes. <laughs> How did the program go? It went really well. I did a lot of things that I didn't get to do in undergrad. So I decided to do um, a student, uh, I did student government. I got involved in surgery club and became part of the e-board. I uh, found out that I was a visual learner and I loved anatomy and I loved um, working with my hands. So I did a lot of the suture um, classes. I learned a lot and I feel like I was, I was well prepared for going into clinical rotations. And where did you do your clinical rotations? So I did, I'm supposed to do them in New York and then COVID hit. And so then we went to um, Cleveland Clinic and back here in Miami. And then okay. I went up to Atlanta and I finished the rest there. Once you finish medical school, you apply to the residency, right? The residency process is separate. It's different. Tell us how that match process works. The match process, it, it starts from the moment you start your clinical rotations. Um, it's about deciding, you know, what kind of doctor you want to be and what specialty you want to focus on. Mm -hmm. And as you're doing that, you know, you're meeting your different preceptors that you're going to your different um, core sites. And you are trying to mold and figure out by asking questions and by being 100% involved um, in every single rotation, what it is that you wanna do. And with that, you know, you have to start thinking about who you want your letter writers to be. Mm -hmm. And you want those to be people that have seen your, um, seen who you are as a person and as a professional. Um, they've seen you do a physical exam. They've seen you do take a history. They've seen how you interact with your patients, how you interact with staff, um, how you do when you're you did an amazing job, and how you what you do when you do a very bad job, and how that how you um, go about that. And so you want those you want to ask those people to be your letter writers, and you also have to um, you know think about what your personal statement. You have to write a personal statement and. Basically, that's one page of, about who you are and how you fit into the specialty that you're applying to. And then you have to decide along with that where you want to go. Um, so there's many programs um, and many different specialties. And so you have to decide where do you, do you want to stay locally? Do you want to stay in your family? Do you want to go um, far away? Do you want to be in a rural or you want to be in an ur urban setting? Big program, small program. There's so many different um, ways to go. And um, you send out your application. It takes a while to formulate everything, but it's a, it's a, it's a long process is what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> For the prospective students listening in, if this is sounding vaguely familiar to you, filling out an application, getting letters of recommendation, personal statement, deciding where you're going to go. If it sounds like this is what you're doing now for medical school, this is exactly what you're going to have to do again for residency, right? So it doesn't stop there. Uh, the, the, the journey continues. <laughs> and Dr. Aminas, what are some of the things that you can do while in medical school to strengthen your application for residency? One of the biggest things is networking um, and doing it in the untraditional um, ways. So whether it be creating a Twitter account, it be a professional account, and reaching out to people who you admire and who are in the positions where you wish to be in, um, I would say dream big. And uh, if you if you say one day I want to open a practice that focuses on children with Down syndrome. And then go ahead and email those the CEOs, those chief medical officers, um, and you'd be surprised who would message you back and and offer advice. Um, I would make sure that you are you give your hundred percent wherever you go, no matter who's watching, and be nice to the staff and befriend the nurses. Mm -hmm. um, and every single rotation, because the moment that the doctors see that you are friends with the staff and that they like you, they will end up liking you too. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 
And I, I would say just have fun, enjoy the process. It goes by so fast. Right. And show your personality, right? Absolutely. Um, you mentioned the alumni connection. I wanted to point out we have over 15,000 graduates in U.S. in Canada. Uh, so definitely uh, develop the connections early. Now, you also graduated off cycle, right? So can you talk a little bit more about, we know we have three starts a year, which means the classes always end three times a year, but residency only happens once a year. So graduating off cycle, what does that mean? That means that you graduate bef earlier or later than the match application um, process or cycle. So it was a bit too early for me to apply um, to a residency. And th there's usually, there, there could be a big gap or a small gap. And some, some people graduate, um, let's say in May, and then they start in July. That just means you have a year, a gap before you apply. Uh, apply or start residency and so that what that looks like is focusing and make and making your application stronger focusing on what what do you need what are your weaknesses what are your strengths and um you know going towards that path so if you if you need to be do re do research um find a research position if you want to do clinical work and focus on, you know, your note-taking skills and become a scribe. Um, if you want to work at a, a private practice, then, you know, work at a private practice. Um, what did I, you do? I, yeah, I've always wanted to do outpatient medicine. And so I um, had asked the pediatric neurologist that I work with at a private outpatient practice if I could work with her. And I ended up doing a bit of everything. I scribed for her um, and I did administrative work for her. I also saw patients for her and she uh, took me to the hospital when, whenever she was on call. So I got to see a bit of everything and um, just truly feel comfortable and comfortable at this point because I worked on the things that I felt like needed a bit more work, like, you know, history taking and note writing, which is primarily what you do as an intern going into residency. Now, match happens mid-March and it's we know it's a big deal. You know it's a big deal. Share with our audience, why is Match Week a big deal? What happens during Match Week? So Match Week, you find out if you match um, into a residency um, program, into a spot, and you find out where. So this is the, the week that everybody anticipates. This is, you know, you went through medical school, and now you're like, I, your first job as a doctor. It's really exciting. And it happened, it's just, it's once a, one week out of the year that every single uh, medical student finds out if they match. Um, and so it's a collective celebration with everybody around the world, really. Um, it's a really big, a really big week. And so on a Monday, you find out, Monday in March, you find out if you match. And then Friday, you find out where. And you did, congratulations. <laughs> Any other advice for our future Rossies watching us here today? Yeah, um, you know, at Ross, I met so many different people from so many different backgrounds. Um, and I initially went into medical school thinking it was hard and long and, you know, life has to stop and, you know, you just have to go through medical school and then life will happen after. So my advice would be to just let life happen you want to get married get married if you want to have children have children if you want to travel travel these things happen during medical school it's part of the journey um and you already going into medical school you already know you're gonna be a lifelong learner and so just you know have fun and ride the waves thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your journey with us here today um Dr. Elizabeth Arminas, future pediatrician in training. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And for those of you watching, we will see you next time. Thank you for listening to Ross University Checking the Pulse, a pre-med podcast. This is Milena Garcia, your host. This podcast is made for you, so let me know what topics you want us to cover on future episodes. You can send me your comments, feedbacks, and requests to mgarcia 
at rossu.edu. Definitely follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel at Ross Med School or on Facebook. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, I am working my way to five stars. So remember to send me your comments and let me know your ideas. If you're on Spotify, remember to click on the follow button to get our future episodes. All right. See you future Rossies and pre-med explorers next week.